Hello there. Thanks for watching and I appreciate you. This is a video in a series of videos showing you how to make a custom character controller that uses rigid body physics, sim machine cameras, Unity's new input system, and custom player gravity. In the last video, we created a simple environment for our player to play around in, we created our player, and we implemented some basic ability to move them around using Unity's physics. And in this short video, we're going to improve on that by implementing player rotation and adding the ability to pitch the camera up and down. But before we get into that, I need to backtrack a little bit and fix a small mistake that I made earlier. So in the project itself, if we go down to the project panel down here, underneath scripts input, humanoid land input, so our input script, we're going to double click on that to edit it. And down at the bottom, I added these move is press boolean modifiers, right? So here we're setting it to true, here we're setting it to false. Why are we setting the false and set look? I don't know, it doesn't make any sense. It's not supposed to be that way. That's gonna cause big problems. Let's fix that. So we delete it from there. All we need to do is set it in set move because this is move is pressed. All we care about is if set move is returning a zero value or some other value, right? So all we gotta do is modify this. So what this is basically saying is if our move input is equal to vector 2.0, that means it's returning nothing, there's no input, right? So if move input equals no input, then that's going to evaluate to true. And our question is move is pressed. Is move is pressed if we're getting no input? No, it's not. So we need that to return false. So we're adding this not operator, this exclamation point here is a not operator. And that's going to take that true and reverse it into a false. Likewise, if move input does not equate a vector 2.0, returning some other numbers, that means that we are getting input, and then it's going to equate to move input's not going to be a vector 2.0, it's going to be some other number, that's going to equate to false, and we want to switch that around, so that not operator is going to turn that into a true, so then move is press is going to be true if there is input. I hope that makes sense. It's pretty simple but it's hard to get your head wrapped around because it's kind of confusing but when you just logic it out like that it's all programming is it's logic if you just follow the logic it'll make sense all right so we're going to save that and that's all we need to fix there okay now with that out of the way we can go ahead and move on to what we're going to do in this video so again down in the projects panel we're going to go under scripts controllers this time we're going to open up our humanoid land controller and we're already to the part of the video where I'm just going to go ahead and type in what we need and then we'll come back and we'll review it all. Okay, now we've got this all typed up. Let's go ahead and review this. Um, we're actually going to jump back in the project, and I'm going to create this camera follow uh, game object real quick. So if we go back to Unity, underneath player, it's going to recompile real quick. Underneath player, we're going to right-click, create empty, and I'm going to call it camera follow. You can call it whatever you want, but I'm going to call it camera follow. I'm actually, while I'm here, I'm going to put the main camera underneath it so that it follows that. Now if we select red, underneath humanoid, and we go down to our controller script, you'll see we have a camera follow, and it's expecting us to add a transform here. So if you click the dot, you go ahead and choose camera follow, or you can just drag and drop camera follow into that field. I'm going to save this, and then I'm going to go back to editing our humanoid land controller. Alright, so we just created the camera follow. I'm going to create a variable for it. 
We're going to make it a public because we're going to use this elsewhere. We want the transform and then what we're just going to call it. And as you saw in the actual editor under red, under the humanoid land controller script where we linked it to the game object, we linked the camera file game object itself so that it is getting the transform of it. Okay. And we didn't have to put serialized field because we put public and that public will automatically put this camera follow inside of the inspector window here. All right, back to our script. We added a vector three variable called player look input. Again, we initialized it because old habits, you don't have to do that. Another vector three, this one we called previous player look input. I created a float called camera pitch and I signed it a 0.0, .0 value. Again, you don't have to initialize these. You could just do float camera pitch. It's the last time I'm probably going to mention that. We'll see. Um, I created a field that I want to show in the inspector. It's a float. This one is a player look input lerp time. And I set the value to 0.35f by default. Continuing on down the line here. All we added in fixed update was we're taking our player look input, which we start, we initialized up here. And we're going to get a value for it by calling the get look input function. The get look input function, it takes our previous player look input and it caches our current player look input before we modify it for this loop. I would say this frame, but this isn't fixed update and there could be multiple fixed updates or less than one fixed update per actual frame. Whereas update is per frame. So it gets confusing. Unity physics and how they work honestly are kind of confusing. Anyways, we are caching the previous value of player look input inside of the variable previous player look input. Now we are taking player look input and we are updating it for this loop. We're creating a new vector three from these values here. All this is doing is it's taking the current input dot look input dot x. That's the actual raw input number on the x axis itself. So this would be the x axis on the mouse. This is basically the left and right of the mouse. We're taking that and we're storing it in a new vector. And then this here is an if statement. It's basically asking if input invert mouse y, which we, I don't know if you noticed, I did it pretty quick, but over here in humanoid land input in the actual input script, I added another public variable called invert mouse y, the bool. We can get it from anywhere. We can only set it privately and its default value is true. So invert mouse y equals true. I want my y-axis inverted. So if we go back to the controller script, if this equals true, then we're going to invert our look input y, which is the y of our mouse, our up and down, or your gamepad, your thumbstick. So up and down, we're going to invert that. If it's false, we're not going to invert it. We're just going to return the raw value. And then the z, we don't care about. For look, we have left, right, up, down. There is no z. Uh, and then we're going to return a value here. So the value itself, we want a nice smooth movement. So what we're going to do is we're going to lerp it. If you don't know what lerping is, um, it basically is just linear interpolation. It tells you right there, if you hover over it, it nearly interpolates between two points. And linearly, it'll kind of average between them based upon a time value. So when you lerp, you need three inputs. We need the previous point. So we're taking our previous player look in input and then we're taking our new input and we're going to times it by time dot delta time. We'll get into why we're doing that more later. Um, even though we're in the fixed update loop, this gets, this is going to get complicated later and we'll go into this a lot more later. Um, but we are going to times it by time dot delta time here. And then our time value is going to be our player look input lerp time, which is a variable that we set up here, 0.35. Okay, so that calculates that. It returns the value. The value gets stored in player look input. After that, we call the player look function. And all that's doing is that's going to rotate our rigid body based upon a quaternions. You need to use its quaternions. If you're not familiar with them, get familiar with them. That's, they're complicated, but you need to get familiar with them at some point. Uh, for the X, we're not worried about that. We don't want to rotate on our X axis. And we don't want to rotate on our Z axis either. We want to rotate around our Y axis, which is up and down. So this is going to rotate us left and right. And the way we're going to do that is we're going to take our original rotation value and we're going to add the result of our player look input, the X result 
times our rotation speed multiplier. So that's it for rotating us. So we come back up, that's it for that function. Go back up to fixed update. Next function is pitch camera. So in pitch camera, we have a vector three, calling it rotation values. Basically what we're doing is we're catching the original rotation values, the Euler angles of our camera follow game object, which we linked earlier. We have a global camera pitch variable, which we set up top here. By default, it's value 0, 0.0. We're taking that value and we're adding to it our player look input y value times our pitch speed multiplier. Then we're taking that value and we're going to clamp it so that our camera pitch is never more or less than 90 degrees up or down. Once we're done clamping that to make sure we don't go outside those limits, we can then set our actual rotation on our camera file game object. Using quaternion again and the Euler angles, we're going to set the camera pitch right there. And then these are the original values. And um, actually, these are a relic from experiments I was doing. And we don't really need to do this here. We can just simply comment that, paste that like that, and that. That'll give us the same thing, and spare us a line. And it's a little messier. I don't know. It don't really matter in the end. Eh, I'll just leave it. It's fine. And that's it. So that takes care of pitch, that takes care of rotation, takes care of general input. And if we go back to our actual game, it's going to compile again. And so if we play the game, we can now look left, right, up, and down. So yeah, that's it. We can now rotate our player. We can pitch our camera up and down independent of our player movement. And actually rotating our camera around our player rotates our player as well. So our camera is always pointing where our player is facing giving us an effective third-person camera. Our camera will clip through the ground at this point, but we are limited in movement, 90 degrees, well, 89.9 degrees. It will not pitch any further than that. Real quick, I just want to interject. The reason why I call it camera pitch is if the distance on the camera was actually zero and the camera was actually in the player's head, what are we doing? We're pitching up and down, right? So, it's literally just pitching, and when you set a negative distance on it, then yeah, it's going to technically not be pitch, it's going to be just rotating around the player at a fixed distance. But I just wanted to clarify that real quick, because we are going to be setting up a first person and a couple of third person cameras, but we are always going to refer to this as camera pitch. And that's it, that's all the code it takes. Um, it really wasn't much. Here you can see it again. It is a little more complicated than the code we used previously because we're getting the storing um, values across loops and we're creating new vectors and we're lerping. I really strongly suggest you learn about lerping and also there is slurp which spherically interpolates between two vectors. That's very useful too, you'll use that a lot in game development. And then here we're just simply rotating the rigid body. And then here we're just simply modifying the camera follows, transforms, rotation. Now it's interesting to note here that here we're actually updating the rigid body, but here we're actually updating the transform. But yeah, it seems really simple once the code's actually in front of you. Um, but I went through a lot of iterations of this, and I'm sure I'll go through a lot more yet because this is far from perfect. Okay, that's it for this video. Uh, the next video is going to be really interesting because we're going to be implementing Cinemachine, so stay tuned for that. If you're feeling generous, leave a comment down below. I want to read what you're thinking. Let me know if you have any questions or recommendations. I'd also appreciate it very much if you liked the video, and if you're feeling extra, extra generous, it'd blow my mind if you subscribe to the channel. Being new to this and putting these videos together takes a lot of time and effort. Thank you for any and all participation and support. I look forward to continuing this in the next one. See ya.